You're watching television, on cable, on computer. Tonight at 7, watch CSI, Batavia. At 8 o'clock, there's something like an Agatha Christie novel. We now join Cooking with Chainsaws, already in progress. <laughs> They say you should start before you're ready. So I started. And what I found out was <laughs> I wasn't ready. Thank you all for coming to this writer's meeting. Uh, I want to get some ideas and material for our sketch show. I think we know everybody, but uh, let me introduce Audrey the intern. Yeah, hi, uh, my name is Audrey. Audrey's going to be helping us. So if there's anything you need, just ask Audrey. <clears throat> yeah, I'd like something. Uh, Audrey, uh, could you get me a Perrier and a tumbler with a uh, lemon twist over ice? Of course, coming right up. Thank you. So Ryan, uh, any ideas? Uh, what's our budget for this? Nothing, but we have an intern. Great, great. Uh, so I'm thinking uh, of a sketch where two people are just walking across Fountain Square. One of them says something funny, and the other says something funny back. Great idea. What do you need? Audrey, I need you to reserve Fountain Square. You mean like the fountain? Uh, the whole square. OK, I'll ask for the whole square. And a crane. A crane. It needs to be 10 stories tall. Got it. Great. Uh, Erica, any, uh, anything? Yes. I would like to do a baseball sketch. Instead of using players, though, I want to use penguins. Audrey, we need some penguins. Ember penguins or little fairy penguins? I didn't know I'd have a choice. I'll get both. OK, and I want to do it at the ballpark. Good idea. Audrey, reserve Great American Ballpark. Sure. Oh. And get Pete Rose into the Hall of Fame, but discreetly. Very discreetly. And I'd uh, like to reverse the flow of the Ohio River. Yep, got it. And uh, the coach should be played by Bradley Cooper. I have him on speed dial. This is a great start. Anything else? Yeah, Audrey, did you get my period? It's right behind your laptop. Uh, could you freshen up these ice cubes? I'm going deer hunting next week. I don't kill them. I do catch and release. Oh, hey, did you get the uh, email from Audrey, the intern? Oh, the one where she says they need the material for the sketch show? Yes. Something funny and lighthearted. Entertaining, low budget. Yes, and maybe with Bradley Cooper. You know the first thing I'm thinking? Murder mystery. Yeah. Like a, a, an Agatha Christie novel. Yeah. Okay, here's the setup. There's four people at a dinner party and three of them die. Too small, not enough victims. 12 people at a dinner party and 11 of them die. Too much like the Last Supper. Okay, eight people at dinner, seven die. Still seems like it's a lot to cook for if you're just gonna kill them. You kill a few of them during the drinks beforehand, a few more during the appetizers and the rest after dinner. That way, half of them are dead before anyone is seated, so you don't have to make as many entrees. Make it six. Six at dinner, and the hosts are a couple. And the guests can be couples or singles. And one of them's a nun. No. The hosts are nuns. No. Former nuns? No. They're a married couple, a husband and wife. And the guests are one couple and two singles. One couple and two singles, and the singles are unattached. And their current lovers. Or former lovers. And also former lovers of the husband and wife. And current lovers of the other couple. Who are also former and current lovers of the husband and wife. So they kind of know each other. Or the singles are set up to meet each other, fall in love, and then die before dessert is served. But they don't know that yet. Don't know that they're falling in love or that they're not getting dessert? Both. 
So are the hosts the ones killing off the guests? One host kills the guests and the other spouse. And the other spouse. But why wouldn't you just kill your spouse yourself? I mean, a 12-person dinner party seems six like person. An, a six-person dinner party seems like an awful lot to go through for that. Well, that way you get to hide the spouse's murder in with everybody else. Unless it's one of the singles doing the killing. A single invited to a dinner party and ends up killing everybody. That just seems like it should be the host's duty. Well, what if it's a husband and wife and the husband is cheating with all the other guests? With four women. And one of them's a nun. No. Then the husband sits down and realizes at that moment that he is sitting at a table with four of his current or past lovers alongside his wife. Who he knows, knows about them. All before the soup course is served. <laughs> In that case, I think he'd prefer to kill himself. <laughs> each time I go to the barber, I tell him, don't make me too pretty. And each time he succeeds. Remember, gooder is betterer. The goodest is bestest. Honey, 12 for a dinner party? Isn't that a little too much like the Last Supper? It will be the Last Supper for someone. This is a dramatic reading. The text is taken from a work written by the lyricist Jerry Lieber and Mike Stoller from 1952. You are nothing but a hound dog barking all the time. You are nothing but a hound dog barking all the time. You have never caught a rabbit. You are no friend of mine. When you said you were high class, well, that was just a lie. When you said you were high class, well, that was just a lie. You have never caught a rabbit. You are no friend of mine. You are nothing but a hound dog barking all the time. You are nothing but a hound dog barking all the time. You have never caught a rabbit. You are no friend of mine. Greetings, Earthlings. We come here from the far galaxy of Zatar. We come to eat. We come in peace. In peace. And also to eat. Peacefully. Are you food? Honey, are you sure we have enough dessert for all of the guests? Yes, Bradley Cooper, for everyone who makes it that far. For the longest time, I felt sick. I went to doctor after doctor and nobody could tell me what was wrong with me. I felt achy and tired all the time. Everything I did caused pain and fatigue. The doctors ran tests, but all the results came back normal. Every day was a struggle just to get out of bed. The doctors told me that nothing was wrong with me, but I knew something was very wrong with me. Nothing they tried helped. Medications, physical therapy. Group sessions, individual sessions. Electric shock therapy, frontal lobotomy. Then, a friend told me about placebo. Placebo. 
placebo. I asked my doctor about it, and he said, sure, knock yourself out. And after just one dose, I thought I felt better immediately. I felt like I could run a marathon on my hands. I felt like having the entire King James Bible tattooed on my back with a picture of the Last Supper on my butt. But I already did that. Do you want to see Matthew? I wondered if placebo was safe. Then I learned that it had no active ingredients. In fact, it has no medical ingredients at all. It's made of something called inert. 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 So I can take as much as I want, whenever I want. And placebo has been rigorously tested. In fact, they use it in almost every medical trial, so you know it's safe. And it's as effective as you want it to be. Even the generic version. Don't use placebo if you suffer from rational thinking. Logical thoughts. Or science brain. Side effects may include high blood pressure. Low blood pressure. Or blood pressure. You may experience sudden bursts of energy. Or a complete inner calmness. Or see little naked people swimming in your cat's water bowl. I've never had that. Try the green ones. About a handful. I know it works. I can actually feel it moving through my bloodstream. I can feel my hair growing. I can change the color of my eyes. My toenails keep getting longer. My fingernails too. I changed from being right-handed to left-handed. I can feel an alien love child moving through my body, sucking on my internal organs and waiting to erupt through my stomach in a painful, bloody mess. I've never felt that. You will. Placebo. 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 Just because nothing's wrong with you doesn't mean that nothing's wrong with you. So if you suffer from, well, anything, ask your doctor if placebo is right for you. Try the green ones. Bradley Cooper, dearest, you know all of our guests, don't you? Uh, <laughs> yes, yes. Sister, 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 sister. Sister, 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 mother superior. Two households, both alike in dignity, in conflict before the bar. Two lords in quarrel, seek justice. My husband, the city's judge, is taken ill and abed after too much jurors and not enough prudence. So I have donned his legal robe in disguise. For who better to judge men than a woman? <clears throat> Wise counsel have gathered. As you appear in my presence, Please make your appearance at present. May it please the court, I am Sweet Much, representing the much maligned Lord Peas and Beans. May it please the court, I am Begound, representing the much aggrieved Lord Bottom Snout. I pray you, sirs, state your cause and arguments. Your Honor, at the prior weekend sporting festival, my client, Lord Peas and Beans, participated in the tossing of the caber. After his throw, Lord Bottom Snout didst utter slander against my client when he said that he throws the caber like a girl. Is that all? When my client took offense, the defendant told him to man up. What say the defendant? Your Honor, while my Lord may have made that comment, he was also slandered by the other when he was told that he was excellent at tossing, but not with the caber. Sport must surely be good for retaining a youthful nature, for we see how quickly men turn into little boys. 
<clears throat> this weekly sports festival, uh, what engagements and uh, spectacles do they perform? Oh, Your Honor, they practice many activities. There's bear baiting, rabbit skinning, cock fighting. Not that kind. Bog snorkeling, cheese rolling, shin kicking. Haggis eating contest. Haggis earthing contest. Gravy wrestling. Drinking. Rat juggling. Drinking. And welly wanging. Welly wanging? Who can throw their boot the farthest? Did I mention there was drinking? Tis evident. Tell me, as the wise counsel and learned gentleman that you are, what do their wives say? Uh, well, uh, no one has ever asked us, <clears throat> I mean, asked that. All of us men know that uh, Mother Nature hath made women the weaker sex. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> And yet, if women be weaker, does not nature endow her with other attributes, highly prized and valued? Does not her speech soften our hearts when she says, if only I were a man? Though they be only one half of humanity, wouldst we be not full and whole if we were also to hear the echo? If only I were a woman. Your honor, your words move me to confess that I am in fact a woman and wife of Lord Peas and Beans. Your honor, I too confess. I am a woman and wife of Lord Bottom Snout. Please don't judge us harshly. Verily, I could not judge you whatsoever, being of Eve's flesh as well. So, how come you two are dressed as lawyers? <laughs> uh, well, we are the dearest friends and neighbors, and we just wanted to quickly resolve this. And besides, my husband told me to take care of it. So we thought, what the heck? <laughs> Why? father hiring lawyers so we could just go down there ourselves. <laughs> well, uh, let's do what women always do and solve the men's problems. I have heard the complaints and I order the men to stop their games. Uh, no. no, no, why not? He has to leave the house for me to get anything done. I can't change the bed with him in it. Have you ever asked him to help? Have you ever tried to explain to a man how a broom works? I mean, I love him and all, but it's hopeless. And when my lord leaves, it's the only time I get any time to myself. I take a warm bath and have a glass of wine, a book of poetry, maybe even a poet. <clears throat> Then I will solve this case by not solving it. As a recognized judge and an unrecognized woman, I hereby order that the men resume their frivolities, their contests, their caber tossing. And what will we women do without them? Just as we usually do and love them just as much. For if it will serve to toss the cabers in service of love, then truly it will be love's cabers tossed. Audrey, my glass is empty. <laughs> I mean, what are we even doing here? <laughs> this is construction paper. <laughs>
They say something. They say you should do something before